Welcome. I hope you enjoy the conversation you're about to see between me and another comedian about religion and comedy. These are conversations I'm calling Disorganized Religion. God bless. And for those atheists out there, may nothing await you after this life. Hold on, wait, the mute, the meeting is being recorded. Yes, continue. Yeah, okay, we cool. you, you, were my, you, you know you're my first Zoom, by the way. No kidding. Oh, well, this you're is my fun. my first Zoom, We're yeah. working out all the kinks. This is good, this is I good. I know, I like it a lot. Uh, all right, well, welcome back, nerds. This is uh, another edition of Disorganized Religion. I'm very excited for this one. I am the host, Seth Lawrence, as always. And this week, we have the fantastically talented uh, Crystal Chats, yeah. host of The Healthy Gossip, and uh, very recently world traveler, it appears. I don't know if you've traveled the world many times over <laughs> or just in the last few months before the quarantine hit, but she has been around town. Uh, yeah. So welcome. No, that, welcome, that was Crystal. definitely a lifetime of traveling. Thank you yeah. for having me. Thank you. Absolutely. This is going to be a fun yeah. episode. Because you are probably one of the most, I've had atheists on, I've had agnostics on, I've had Christians on, I've had a Muslim on, uh, and you are probably the most unconventional one I've had on. You and Monterey, I think. Yeah, we've had Jews on, I don't want to forget the Jews, the Jews have been on as well, some of them. Um, But yeah, you and and Monterey are a couple of people that, uh, that really that really believe in stuff that I don't understand, that I do not understand. So I want to get into okay. it. You know, I still kind of claim Christianity though. Yeah. Is that right? I mean, like, I know I'm not really, I, I know there's so many contradictions but my whole life is a contradiction. So like, why am I not allowed to? Like, no, I mean, you can do whatever you want, claim whatever okay. you want. Right. Okay. Whatever helps but, you be no, but a good I person. Do, I, I yeah. do get a lot of grief from Christians. So of course yeah as well you should right as well you should 100 percent. it's only one true god um (laughs) let's let's start with with comedy though how long have you been doing stand-up okay so i did my first open mic 10 years ago wow 10 years ago and then so i've did two serious quits i've quit twice yeah. Um, and then, so I, I always tell people, um, and I did get a lot of grief for this because I lied on Kill Tony because I was <laughs> based. And I have something to say about that too, by the way. I, I yeah. did my first like Address a, it. Yeah. live Instagram open mic and I would rather bomb on Kill Tony 15 times back to back <laughs> than ever do another live Instagram open mic. So, wait, Instagram Christ, open please. mic, was it with the virtual mic, which? It was just yesterday, oh, Olivia and I wanted to like run sets together and yeah. it was absolute garbage. It's rough, um, right? It's so rough. So I, I tell people when they ask that question about in total, about three years. Gotcha. So three if you years. clumped everything together, three, three years, years, but 10 years yeah. ago was the first open mic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So had you it's always been 20- interested? Wait, what'd you say? Oh, 20. Wait, what'd you say? Oh, when I was like 22, 23, the first oh, time I got on stage. Yeah. Got it. At first, I thought given you were my, Given my age. <laughs> you were, at first, you were talking about the year. It's like, we're in oh, no, 20. No, no, no. right? That's been that long. My age. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. So, what drew you to stand up? Had you always been interested in it? Or, um, or, or was there a moment that sort of pushed you and said, hey, you should try this? You know, so when I first uh, even, like, I, I never, I think, I think the first time I ever saw, like, live stand-up was actually a Cat Williams show, oh, you know? Oh, yeah. Right, and, and I don't know if it was being an only child, but I had always just kind of, like, tried, or, or, like, being the class clown, like, always tried being the funny guy, um, and so I don't know if that was what was, like, oh, yeah, there's this thing, stand-up comedy that people do. Like, I, I never really studied the grades as I you know a lot of people did back in the day um and so i i remember i i sent a myspace message to a guy and it was yeah i was like hey man i'm really dane cook you message dane cook (laughs) definitely not i lived in san antonio at the time yeah i definitely i i reached out to someone i was like hey how do i get into stand-up yeah. And then he, he gave me like the, there was two comedy clubs in San Antonio at the time. And he was like, we'll hit up these two places. They have open mics. And I was like, cool, cool. 
And I'll never forget my first time, Jay LaFar, shout out, was the host. And I think maybe there was, you know, per usual, like five people in the audience. And I yeah. got up. And, and I remember I was so nervous. And I had my little paper. It was like scribbling notes on. I was like, oh my God, what am yeah. I going to say? And yeah. then, uh, yeah, then I, I, I did it pretty regularly before I moved to LA. But I moved to LA for acting. Mm. Right. So I, as soon as I moved to LA, I didn't do... My first time doing stand-up in L.A. was actually after taking a class. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so I, I, ne I, I never even dared to touch the open mic scene in L.A. until I took a class, and then, you know, I met some people. And yeah. I, I kind of tried, tried figuring it out, but I was always very insecure about the open mic scene. Like, cause, mm. and, and I never really... I, I, it wasn't until this last time trying attempting stand-up that like so this this last time felt like my first real attempt actually because oh. I, I never even really understood what a type five was and e that's even with taking a class i still yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. quite get it like a yeah. type five i was like what the fuck is a type five like, I, I don't i don't want to i don't want to do the same material well you mean the same jokes like i have to tell the same jokes so yeah. like that, that, it, that was really hard for me to like wrap my brain around so yeah right well and it yeah. feels uncomfortable Right. I mean, I don't know, at least for me, some of the draw, some of the appeal to stand up was doing new stuff. That's what was exciting every time, yeah. trying new things. I mean, I mean, you have to think about the culture of stand up with like bringer shows. If I have to beg, you know, yeah. like five to 10 people to come, and if yeah. I can actually get those same people to come, and you have to think most people in Los Angeles don't know any, they, we don't know anybody, you know, so not, not right. only. So now I have these people who I just met who might even come to see me a second time and, and I'm you expect me to do the same <laughs> five minutes? No. Yeah, yeah. They're paying money for the ticket, they're a two drink minimum and yep. and they're paying for parking. And you're yeah. gonna tell the same five minutes of material? Like that to me that's suicide. Yeah, right. You well know? at least so, among the people you know, right? The ones that you're bringing. Right. Well, which yeah. is so it's funny, uh, interestingly enough, Olivia and I were talking about the slotted mic scene yesterday yeah and and you know she was like oh i hate it and i was like no i love it and <laughs> and i, I yeah. love slotted mics like that's the reason why i still do stand up like the fact that i can go to a slotted mic and uh, I, I i'm obsessed with them i actually want to start my own like in other like cities that don't oh that don't have it yet. rochester particularly yeah because yeah. you know like i feel like you know there's definitely a market there at first, I thought you meant on Melrose, uh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who, who listen, watch this podcast, who are not in L.A. or in the stand-up scene, there is an avenue, Melrose Avenue in Hollywood, that has, I don't know, five uh, slotted open mics. And slotted is this online sign-up system where you pay to play. You pay five bucks, and you get five minutes of stage time. It's an hour each uh, sort of show, each sign up, and the same people or, or everyone who signs up for the show is in the show. So you're, you're performing in front of other stand-ups or wannabe stand-ups, people trying it out. Uh, some people and hate it, so, oh yeah. What you I said is true is the same, is, is you can't go back to back. You cannot? You can, you can go back to back oh, to yeah, back yeah. if you want. Yeah, 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 you can be there all day. You can be there all day. All day. You can pay five, mm -hmm. you know, 50 bucks and do five or 10 sets the whole the whole day uh so so what do you like about it is it the familial aspect of it because a lot of the same people kind of go to the same club at the same time well, I, what i like about it is if i have a show booked at 9 p.m and i'm not quite confident um, in the material that i want i can literally go two hours and spend two hours of my day and try a joke twice in a row when yeah. old school you would never be able to do that yeah, you know? at least it'd be difficult, right? You'd right. have to have luck, luck on your luck, side. Luck, or know somebody, or or you'd have to <laughs> right. tip the host and say, hey, oh, like, sure. here's 20 bucks, you know, let me get up, please. I, I really want to work this out. Yeah. Um, I find that beneficial. And, and, you know, some people can argue against that and say that, because I've definitely, I remember specifically, it was a show I had at the Belly Room. That was a late show, like 10 p.m. I went yeah. and I did a mic on Melrose. Um, it was actually yeah. at the Pretty Funny Woman studio. I remember she had just started her mic. I, everyone bombed, you know, it was crickets the whole time. 
And then yeah. I, I felt I had a really great set that night, you know, so just because yeah. you, you can practice it doesn't mean you're, it's necessarily going to reflect how you're going to do later on, but that's comedy in general. Like in any yeah. stand-up comedian knows, like you could do back to back sets of this in the, in the same club and it's going to yeah. be totally different, you know, like you yeah. don't know who's there and what well, for people have heard you, et cetera. Right. And they're, I mean, they're big players, you know, they, they tape every special, at least twice, sometimes three times, and exactly. edit it together depending on audience reaction and timing of the jokes because it's it's a little bit different every single time. But I've, I've heard you know interviews with you know like Bill Burr or uh, um, Zach Galifianakis or you know Chris D'Elia. Uh, Chris D'Elia talked about it not too long ago on his podcast about you know how some audiences just don't get you right up front, and you know others others are right there with you the whole time. So. What do you think you get though from a slotted open mic crowd? Because I've found uh, it's not always the, the stand-ups that are watching me are not always the best, at least barometer for how the same material is going to play in front of a normal crowd. Well, it also depends on how you practice. Like if I if I go up and and I have my notebook or my phone right here. And yeah. I've never said this out loud in front of anyone before. Yeah. I'm going to feel exponentially more comfortable amongst my peers saying, hey, guys, I literally wrote this an hour ago. Yeah. Here we go. You know what I mean? Yeah, versus yeah, yeah. Like, like versus going to a mic where it's like, oh, there's people in here. <laughs> you know, yeah. like this is there, there, there are pedestrians in here. There, you, you don't know who knows who rather than knowing like, I mean, I know there's a lot of people, like, especially who have a, a following in slotted mics as well. Like, I've been in rooms where I was like, dang, like, I don't know, they were going to be here. Like, I, I feel bad for bringing this set in, or I'm high right, right. now. Like, what? Well, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like that energy of, we're all comics, yeah. you know? I, I've never said this out loud, besides in my living room. And yeah. I'm about to try it in front of you guys before I go bring it to the belly room. You know? right it's like um and 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 that's what i like uh and, and then i like too like hey by the way you guys i have a huge show tonight and this is my polished and you know open some open mics uh slotted mics have 10 minute sets and this is my polished 10 minutes i know there's four of you in here but here goes you know and you're yeah. record, and then you can record yourself and even if there's not as you know there's no one laughing back at you at least you have that recording where you can go listen to yourself back and say oh right. I love that line you know or you right. can't really do that you know because there is that 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 like being on a stage with a mic and even having just a host it mm. makes it that much more real than being in your living room looking at yourself in the mirror <laughs> yeah I mean yeah, that's how sure. I see it you yeah. know and, and and I do have that slight edge where I live in that neighborhood of Melrose so it's uh -huh. like I, it's not I'm not I'm not paying for parking. I'm not like driving right. 45 minutes to get there to where for me, it's like going to the gym, right? Yeah. I'm, like, I'm here to practice. And if I need to stay, you know, two, three hours to like work it out a few times, I'm willing to do that. Yeah. Because you know, it's worth, it's worth my time and my money because, you know, I've yeah. even, I've even done it to where I, I've gone, I've worked out my material and then I've gone home, rewrote mm -hmm. it and then gone back, you know, because oh, I, sure. I found it. Yeah, because I it's, for me it was that useful and it was it was worth it. So yeah. and, but, and you know you have to use it how you can use it. But then I've also heard people driving an hour to go yeah. to like Burt's, and I'm like, I'm doing an hour to get here. Yeah, Oof. you yeah. know, so, for five minutes. Hopefully they're doing yeah. I guess two hours, right? And Ten to pay. Like, yeah, I know exactly. it's crazy. So it's it's totally. crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so why did you quit two times, and then what brought you back both times? So first, why did you quit? What 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 drove you away, Crystal? Well, technically, the first quit, I mean, you can even say I quit three. Well, so the first one was Texas, because Texas, oh, so I, you I moved. Texas. Yeah. I moved to LA to do acting. Got it. And I was just chicken <laughs> shit, and I'm like, I'm not going to quit. It was already hard enough doing open mics in a, in a town where I knew everyone versus, like, yeah. I, like my first bomb in Texas obviously was devastating, so I was like, I'm not bombing in LA. Right. Oh, like, uh, we had a little technical difficulty, but we have Crystal <laughs> Chats back. So she was explaining she moved from Texas to LA. That's why she stopped mm -hmm. the first time. She was a little too intimidated by what she yeah. expected the talent level to be. 
in LA mm -hmm. at the open mics. All right, so pick it back up for us. And then the second time, like, I, it was honestly a relationship. Um, it was, there, 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 yeah, it was like, not, not a, there was no support and it was, and rightfully so though, the person was bringing up like, oh, well, you're not getting paid, you know, you're paying money to be there and then you're hanging out in these seedy bars every night <laughs> yeah. or clubs and you're just around a bunch of men, single men at that and sure. then like two girls and I, you know, it was a lot of manipulation and I was just like, okay, like and now understand well, that's just what the culture is, you know? Um, yeah. I, I just thought I, 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 always, I was just nodding my head and was okay. I, I was almost just like, you're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and, and even when you are, again, you brought up Chris Lee talking about it. Even when you are 110% invested in it, it's mm -hmm. still grueling, yeah. you know? So if you have your literal partner saying, stop, it, yeah. it's very easy to stop. You know, so because you yeah. you really need to be lifted, you know, if you sure because it's it's grueling. Yeah, I mean, it certainly can be. I guess the other side of it, though, is and I've felt aspects of this this almost addictive side, right? Where where you're up on stage, it's exhilarating. You you say a joke uh, that you know is edgy or that you're unsure about, and and it, and it pops, right? A huge laugh, and like it's. I don't know whose internet is, is to blame. Yeah, it might yeah, be. I'm, I don't know. I'm definitely in the country, so it could easily be mine. We're just going to blame yours because okay, I... Okay, please uh, do. No, I don't know. It's probably mine. Okay. I was just saying that stand Or it could be has, the fact that, you know, you know, 7 billion people are using internet right now. Could be that. Well, not 7 billion, but maybe it, like 4, right, but still. Almost. Okay. Almost. It could be that we're going to talk about MK Ultra later and they are preempting our conversation trying to you shut it down early. Stop that. <laughs> um, so, no, I was saying that there is an addictive element to stand up because it's exhilarating. Uh, you, you get up there, you try a joke that you haven't tried before, you say it a different way, you know it's gonna be edgy, you're hoping it hits and it does. And you know, you're sort of chasing those moments every time you get on stage. So it'd be difficult, right. it would be difficult for me to stop if, if, um, I mean, obviously, if you have to, you have to, right? How long but, have you been doing stand-up? I don't know this about you. Oh, yeah. I'm I mean, in my I, th I, third year. Third year of stand-up. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I, I started when we moved out to L.A. I did a couple open mics in North Carolina. Um, okay. But it was, uh, you know, interest. But, but yeah, I mean, technically, that's where I started, I suppose. But as far as really that's committed to doing it here, here in L.A., and out of my uh, personal curiosity, how are the kids handling the quarantine? Man, we are, uh, we're managing. We've, we've had to sort of realign yeah. our schedules and I had to realign my expectations for my youngest. So my youngest, I have three kids. Oh. The youngest is a year and a half and is in this transitional phase of moving from two naps a day to one solid okay. nap. Okay. And uh, it's been going a little bit better this week as we've moved to just, you know, powering through lunch and then and then she hits well, her Well, your, your kids have like two of like very highly intelligent people like as their homeschool teachers. So it's like, <laughs> oh, well, that's very sweet. Yeah, we, we're calling that in for that's sure. That's sweet. That's just big facts. <laughs> big was that big data. Big data coming yeah, at you. Yeah, it's big data. Yeah, uh, like, what you, yeah. I like that. I mean, they use that a lot now. <laughs> Their yeah, their teachers have done <laughs> yeah their teachers have done a good job of uh, you know setting up Zoom stuff so my son does stuff on class in Zoom almost every day and then my daughter has online homework and stuff that she she keeps up to date on um, okay. yeah so cool. we we figure out a okay. schedule they rotate on right. on my computer throughout the day and and uh, you know we have some outside time and then uh, yeah. So we're, we're hanging, we're hanging in there. How are you handling quarantine? I don't even feel like I'm quarantined, honestly. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm on a long break. Like I, honestly, well, besides the fact that I should have taken a few breaks where I've gone to yeah. LA and like, I, I was trying to like get hip to like other comedy scenes, but other oh. than that, I'm like, I, I'm still going to the grocery stores. I'm not wearing the 
Masks. Jeez. Are you are I'm you not, in the LA area now or no? No, I, I'm I'm Northern California. Oh, got it. Got yeah, it. The mountain, yeah. Out in out the boom docks, trying to just stay away from these city folks. Who yeah, are, right, right. That's yeah. probably the safest place to be is out in the country somewhere. Yeah, well, so which is great because like there there are no lines that are like you know there's definitely social distancing, but sure. it, I, I've seen the the videos of of the lines outside of the grocery stores in the Los Angeles area, and that's Man. insane. Yeah, we haven't Ooh. experienced that. Thank goodness. It is. Wow. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. Yeah. I can't do that. And it's really sad because, you know, again, we keep talking about Melrose. Like, that. Right. Th- those are all, like, non-essential businesses, you know? Yep. Like, uh, yeah, well, I was talking like, to Rachel. Like, don't call me an essential. Like, I, I want I want to shop at my little boutiques and eat at my yeah. little cafes. And, yeah. Well, and all these people, you know, that was their livelihood. That's their income. And so now they're all stuck filing for unemployment and it's a whole mess i mean it's a whole mess what was what was rachel saying uh so rachel cuthbert is the owner operator of birth back room a slotted venue on melrose um yeah she was just saying she's she's rethinking uh she's gonna rethink the the model for for her her business her open mic setup I don't know exactly well, what direction she wants to go with it, but it, who they knows? Only, they only ex- they extended the quarantine. I know for two weeks, right? So now May fifteenth, like, so. I think. <laughs> last I heard, so I yeah. don't know. We'll make it. I mean, my kids aren't going back to school for the rest of the school year. It's like it's yeah. like every time we're done with a certain subject, <laughs> you know, we're, it's like, just, now we're on to the next subject. We got to move. We got to move but, on. Yeah, but which is okay. Okay. Yeah, that's Let's fine. Not- uh. All right. So before we go to the religious stuff, was there anything and the conspiracy theory okay. stuff? Was there anything more you wanted to say mm-hmm. about Kill Tony? I don't know if you addressed it as much as you wanted to, or if you want to just move on. I can move on. We we don't need to talk about it. Uh, just just my apologies because I, the only thing that people even said to me because I remember I, I reached out to you specifically. I was like, okay, we yeah. I did that. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like what? They were like white. Why did you lie about how long you've been doing stand up? Right. And I'm like, because anyone who's been doing stand up longer than a year shouldn't have looked how I looked. <laughs> so, in a nervous wreck yeah. and mess that I was, and you know, and, and again, and bringing it back to slotted mics, no one. You can practice doing a minute for as long as you want, but when you're drunk and high, a right. minute is not a minute. You're like, <laughs> I got, I got three minutes. <laughs> Hold on, I got, I'm gonna start this three times. Yeah, and I got this genius joke, and, and that, that was it. Really, like, how? Well, and yeah. then another thing I, I would like to say is that. Um, by the way, I, I am going to be posting my five minute set on Patreon probably like next week or whatever. Nice. Um, so if you want to watch, donate a dollar and you can see it. And oh, I there actually you go. tell the joke that I, I meant to tell. Yeah. Um, which which I love. I love the bit. I haven't like retired it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That didn't that. kill it. Kill Tony didn't kill the no, bit. No, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. no, and and I and I've I've gone back and I've attempted to get back on stage like a few times. So like I'm not right. I'm so, as, as bad as it was. I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> yeah. um, you do have to develop uh, a thick skin. So. But. Yeah, I thought that was it. and honestly though, shout out to Daniel Ishes. He is one of my heroes. Uh, he is. Uh, do you know who he is? I don't. You know Daniel Ishes? Oh, think and so. he actually. Oh, you don't know Daniel Lucius? Okay. He, 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 I broke his, I broke a promise to him. He, okay, so before the healthy gossip, I actually had a podcast, the Crystal Chats podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, that's where my stage name came from. And, yeah. And I, I, I promised him that I would never get on stage again uh, under the influence. I, oh, I told no. him that whenever I, yeah, I, I used to host a Mike in Long Beach, uh, K Squared shout out was the best oh, yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and he said that he was like, "Hey, man. He's like, I just want to let you know, no matter what, like, don't ever, don't ever drink or smoke before you get on stage because he he's he broke it down for me. He's like, think about what you're practicing for. You're practicing for like an hour special, right? Like, right. if you think about it, like, if you even really kind of seriously want to do this, like, what's the out? What's 
what's the objective here? And I'm like, right. oh, you're right, you know, like making money off of it. And eventually, yeah. So he's like, if you ever had an hour, would you ever even take a sip of alcohol or he'd even take a little, little puff of a joint? Right. And I was like, hell no. He's like, so why would you do that when you're practicing? And, yeah. and of course, in my head, whenever it killed Tony, I'm like, it's a minute, it's a minute. <laughs> like, I, and it's literally, it, it was a joke. I think I said I had been doing stand-up for like six months. I, I think I've been telling that joke for a year. Yeah. And I've been telling this joke for a year. I can't, I can be <laughs> face. I f***ed up the joke. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the point, the point that I was trying to make is, it's a shooter joke that I was trying to tell. Right. And I think a shooting had just happened. Oh. And I, so I got in my head about it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like, so then you started okay, second guessing it. Joke. Yeah. Yeah. So then I tried to like warm it up by telling a joke that I forgot. And then it was a hot minute. And it, it is a tight minute anyway. So there is no warming it up. You just got to get in it and get out. Yeah. And that's and that was it. Yeah. Kind so, of like the shooting. Again, big, huge shout out to Dan yeah. just Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I, reached, <laughs> I think I think I reached out to you and jived you a little bit because I was like, oh, I didn't know you'd only been doing stand up for three months. <laughs> oh, which is fun. Uh, they're like, why did you say that? Why did you say yeah, that? Like, yeah, I'm there's sorry. A, I'm if sorry. there is any rule, it is don't lie about the time, you know? Um, that's that's cool though. Yeah. So it's I, almost I think, like a girl, you know, who that's It's like it's like almost like a girl who's with a guy the first time. I was like, I don't usually do this. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> right. Every time. Every if you start, if that's a line yeah. that you have, you are not that type of girl that you're claiming mm-hmm. to be. Um, all right. right. So let's exactly. get in. Has has the quarantine and has what's happening right now around the world has that changed any outlook you have spiritually wise, religious wise, and then we'll get into sort of you know your religious history and and where you are now but has it changed at all over just the last couple weeks i i kind i kind of like found jesus again oh in in a way um yeah yeah well because in the sense that uh so that that's what, can I just can I just say that and leave it at that? Yeah, and we'll come back to it. We'll come back but, I mean, to it again. I know you're gonna ask more questions, right? Okay. Right. So where where did you how were you how were you brought up? Were you brought up in a religious household? Catholic. Catholic. Pretty like stringently Catholic. Every Sunday. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Um, I mean, Holy Communion reconciliation yeah. and i'm saying this out of order uh <laughs> but all, all of it yeah okay so how do it, yeah. so what are the catechisms i've always had this question are there multiple catechisms or is there just one catechism that you do well the first grade is reconciliation and the second grade is where you get catech- like the body of christ catechism and then it, i thought that it, was communion until, like, ninth well, are you talking about? Oh, are you talking about catechism as in like a Sunday school? I I don't like, know. What do you mean by catechism? I don't know. Like, Maybe not. I thought I we, thought in, in, cate- in in my household we called. I'm sorry. Yeah, my uh, I I'm I was wrong there. In my uh, household, catechism is like uh, Sunday school. Got it. Okay. So go okay. ahead. You explain to me what it is. Oh, I know. I don't know. I thought catechisms were like rite of passage in the. Catholic faith, but I, I really have no idea. Um, but well, Sunday school. so if, yeah. if that's the case, well, 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 which is what you do, you go to Sunday school to work on the catechisms again, first grade reconciliation, second grade Holy Communion. Oh, okay. And then you kind of like skip all the way until like ninth grade where you do confirmation. And that's when you decide that you're ready to be a Catholic. And then, of course, like marriage, holy orders. And gotcha. There you go. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Uh, so, brought up Catholic, you went to Mass every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. And when did, so do you identify as Catholic now or no? No. I mean, to my mother, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because like I, I just 
I mean, we used to go ahead and get into it. Like, I, I don't like what's going on in the Catholic Church. You know, uh-huh. I, I never liked that they were a city state. I never liked how much money the Catholic Church had. Uh-huh. I never liked that they like. Uh, I, I I never liked that one priest, you know, ever got convicted of all, when all that stuff happened. So, uh, and even before all of that happened, I still did go to church and I would tell my friends like, okay, like I go to church because I, I did like, what I did like about the Catholic church is that it was private. You know, you could go and you could sit in the corner. You yeah. didn't have to stand up and and, and, and feel the Lord and like, you know, like, wow, ah, like scream. Like, you know, you just, kind of, it was almost like a meditation. Uh-huh. Like you, you, kind of, you didn't even have to listen. You could just kind of sit there, <laughs> sit, stand and kneel. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and let, you know, and, and there were the a few times in my life and, and there, or in the middle, not, right. not quite at the end, but right, yeah, right. Towards, towards the end. And there were definitely a few times in my life where like I needed Jesus and I went to like I love that the I love that the church is always open and I actually yeah. went and I had to sit and pray and it was it was very much so needed so yeah. like you know I still have a connection to the church um, I just now that I feel like I've been enlightened a little bit about what is actually going on I just can't quite. Uh, and and just to bring it back around already to like I, I found like I said I found Jesus recently is yeah I remember telling a friend I was like well I was like well then what what church is right and and he was like well there is no church that's right he's like just follow Christ and I was like oh I was like I like that if you want to call you know God Christ like then I, that makes total sense to me because my ever since I kind of like started stepping away from the church i've always told people no matter what as long as to me there's always going to be a higher power there's always going to be a god yeah there's always going to be a christ a lord whatever you want to call it whatever it is that you worship as long as it's not satan <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah find fi- fi- find that find that and yeah. and that's that was my whole deal gotcha so, yeah uh so mm-hmm. what what sort of led you i guess away from the catholic church was it just you know the hypocrisy amongst the priests or was it was it that's it know, that was it 100%. okay that was it that was gotcha. it yeah 100%. yeah mm-hmm. all I right I, I couldn't i couldn't handle it i i hated it i yeah. every every last little bit of it just drove me nuts mm-hmm. yeah yeah well fair enough it's sort of a big deal right <laughs> um so Huge. did you did you feel a personal connection with god or um what well, yeah while you're in, in yes. a member of the catholic faith personal connection with god yeah. i've never said this out loud before oh but my prayer in my head was always mm-hmm, the, the big news is um lord always keep in your heart that i love you and nothing can come in between my love for you gotcha. which was interesting right because as long as and which always, as long as I realized nothing, it, the Lord isn't the church, the prayer is still true, you know? And just yeah. because I disconnected from the Catholic church doesn't mean that I, 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 and I've been accused of this when I was doing tarot and crystals mm. and all this, like, oh, that's, you know, uh, false idols. And I was like, well, I still believe in God. So you guys can accuse me of whatever you want. But for me, as long as I have a God in my life, like, and, and all the people have accusing me of that were never Catholics anyways. I'm like, I never believed in the same church as you anyway. So why are you guys being so mean to me just because I'm flipping <laughs> a few tarot cards? And my tarot card story is actually really great. And I, I hope we, get, we have time to get to that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about where you went after, you know, spiritually, where where you went for comfort after leaving Catholicism. So I kind of just stopped, uh, especially in LA, because like I didn't like going by myself anyway. Yeah. Um, and th- there was never an- another church. Like I, I did visit other churches but i was i was never like oh this is the place yeah like i went to that what's that one church on uh hollywood and and like found it yeah there's this one like really woo woo hollywood church that i tried 
And like I was like, oh, maybe there's another like you know Christian way, and I was yeah. I, I was always like, nope. Um, <laughs> yeah. And but with, with but but I've always I've always prayed. Like I said, no matter what, even like right. I have always believed in a higher power. Like no matter what, like I've never been like oh, God. I never, never once was like I'm an atheist. Yeah. First, I mean, maybe for like ten seconds, I was like. Is there a God? But never was. I never woke up the next day and was like, "I'm atheist." Never. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. So. Um. So for you, what is or who yeah, is always, God? There's always. There's always. Sorry, go ahead. You can fit. There's well, always. Well, as of today, it, it, no, no. As of there was always a higher power, but as of today, it's Christ. There's always going to be because because why not? And in, in my head, the way I see it is like I. And, and shout out to my friend who had, had reintroduced me to it because he has comforted me in the conspiracies and he's like, it's okay. He, he goes, it takes, he goes, it takes a lot of courage to follow Christ. Yeah. And I was like, I like that. And, and, that, and it was the same person that I said, well, like, is there a church like that you feel? And he was like, no, he's like, just follow Christ. And yeah. I was like, have, okay, and here's my question to you. Have you ever heard of the Essene Gospel of Peace? The the what? The Essene? Essene? E-S-S-E-N-E, Gospel of Peace. No, I've not heard of that. You should write it down and look it up. It's, it's actually not that long of a read. And apparently it's this, I don't know if you want to call it a book of the Bible, that it talks and it's totally related to the to today it talks about how the lord says if um if you want to heal your diseases or or whatever it is that you have going on to fast and pray huh. a lot of the book talks about fasting and praying and back when i got into my woo woo crystal new age tarot card stuff a lot of it was because of the raw food diet and i was like i was very much into just energy and yeah. like, oh, like, you know, uh, one, of, one of the things I used to tell people was when I, I couldn't quite comprehend what God was, is it, it's, it's an insult for us to think we can even comprehend what God is in our human form. Oh, interesting. Okay. And, and, and that's what I would tell people. It's like, you know, there's something greater than you, but for you to, to point fingers and go, no, this is the way was an insult. And that's what I would tell people. Mm. So when what I and, and that's whenever I realized through food and what because I, I hated uh big I've always hated big pharma. Mm -hmm. I've always hated that people were always looking for a pill so a quick fix and um no one ever had the discipline to heal themselves naturally and, and fasting is a perfect example. Yeah. And the reason why I love the Essene Gospel of Peace is because there's controversy of why it was like a book that was taken out of the Bible because it's all Christ, it's all Jesus Christ talking about how fast and pray and even says where you know the the um love is patient love is kind prayer is in there and it talks about how like no if there's something that you're trying to heal it's like oh, there's a lot of power in fasting which is still completely relevant you know the fasting for 40 days um and, and there and another thing is this is a whole other conversation that we can have at another time but sure. there's a huge dif difference between fast fasting and starving like i don't <laughs> right. people think oh you, you want me to starve like no no, no starving and fasting are two yeah. totally different things you know like there's like fasting is nothing it's water and air and prayer but starving is eating a few crumbs or pieces of bread because you're literally trying to eat but you have nothing to eat like it's total totally different yeah so um that that was my whole and, and that's the reason why I, I find it very interesting that it's still very relevant today with like with all this coronavirus vaccination blah 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 no one's talking about getting healthy no one's talking about well, <laughs> right. hey, there's all these no one's talking about these immunocompromised people well, like well let's let's figure out how we can not make them immunocompromised anymore. yeah like, well what's wrong with them okay are they obese let's yeah. help them lose some weight yeah you know, is yeah. It, you know yeah okay, get a healthier diet diabetes so let's yeah. get them up you know like exercise yeah. walk go get some sunshine you know no one's talking about that Right. And that's why I'm like, this is crap, yeah. you know, and that's why. But again, it, it's so many little conversations yeah. that you have to have to see the big picture 
where I'm just exhausted, where I'm like, I'm just, again, I told you I was saying, I'm just going to call Bill Gates the Antichrist and then call it, <laughs> call it, a, you know, end it with that. I'm like, I don't, I don't have the energy to explain every, to every single person my six years of research that I've done as to why this is all crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? All right. And that's there's, why I'm so frustrated. Yeah, you know? there's so much to unpack. So we're going to take it a piece at a time and we'll see how far we get in the next few minutes. Uh, we have no, no cap on this, so we'll just see where this goes. Um, but you mentioned, okay, so you mentioned going through, uh, now is woo-woo a technical term or is that just a term that you're using to lighten a bit what you're talking about with the crystals and the tarot cards? It's urban dictionary technical. Got it. Like so what do you people, mean by woo-woo? People who would talk anything that's not like again like christian would be, christian like tarot cards okay. would be woo woo okay oh yeah uh any anything uh, that's not very godly or christian is woo woo got it okay specifically okay. crystals like most people would say crystals would be woo woo yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah that's definitely urban dictionary technical okay okay mm-hmm. so uh what what about crystals drew you i mean do you believe in them still or or is that even the right sort of terminology to believe in them because i've talked to some people you know off this podcast about crystals and they're like oh no there's nothing to believe in or not it's science which i also am like i don't i don't think so but maybe maybe it is science um yeah so is there what is the thing for crystals i mean what is what do they do so it's the same way I I used to interpret God to people. Like it, okay. if it like kind of like I used to always say placebo. Like a placebo works for some people, you know. Yeah. Like for some people, if you tell them, like if I if I came up to them with like a bag of sugar and I'm like I'm gonna take this magic sand that I got from the islands of the Philippines that my great grandmother told me. And I put it on your head and all the demons. And then you wake up the next morning and you're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. If it works, it works. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. Like that's kind of... And so, and uh, the funny thing is you were asking about tarot cards. So my theory with tarot cards, which is why I kind of don't want to necessarily read cards for you. Okay. I don't like reading, I don't like reading tarot cards unless I'm sober. Sure. And I'm talking about, you know, no alcohol, no weed, no nothing. And, and I would actually much rather be at least 30 days sober because I do believe yeah. in the energy from like just mental clarity in my body, like regenerating cells. Like it, it's the same, like your skin kind of works the same way. You right. know, like if you get on a certain diet, you're like, for example, like let's say you have a, um, an, an allergy to dairy and then you quit dairy. Like if you quit dairy the next day, it's not going to clear up. But after 30 days, you're probably right. going to see your skin clear up, you know? Yeah. It's the same way. Like I really feel like when I used to, uh, I used to, like I, I was a raw vegan for a while. And oh, let me tell you, does my energy change when I eat a raw vegan diet? Absolutely. And I believe there's a reason why they call alcohol spirits, mm. you know, because there's definitely a certain energy that possesses you right. when you drink. And like, oh, I don't, I don't know who I was last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you, you know, they were, do have you were drinking you were drinking spirits. Yeah. Yeah, but they do have, you know, scientific evidence for why people's behavior changes under the influence of alcohol and drugs, right? There are certain chemicals right. that are blocked or increased or introduced into the brain. Uh, but do you believe in in a mystical element too? One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. One hundred percent. I mean, do well. Do I believe? Could could you dumb it down and say scientifically, your neurons going to you know, like your you know, prefrontal cortex is just trash. Right. Uh, do I believe that your brain doesn't develop till twenty three? So should you not drink and you know, you know, and interfere with your brain developing? And does that have to do with it? Yeah, absolutely. But. But let's say there is somebody who, you know, let their brain develop properly in the right amount of time and have never drank. Uh, it, it, you can't tell me that. So you take two people 
that, you know, gave their brain the certain amount of time to develop properly and they were on the same diet, you know, good family, they're still going to react, in my opinion, two different ways. They're sure. both not going to be too, okay, they're going to drink and they're going to be both happy, you know, or, or, right. or they could react to different liquors or beers differently, you know, and, and that's why I think it's different, you know, yeah. because you could, I believe 100%, you could do that study and it's going to be different outcomes no matter what, because you just don't know what kind of person that is really on the inside, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Who, who knows? I think it's going to be different every time, no matter what. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm, I mean, I'm not saying I have, I, I don't I don't act differently every time I drink, but I will say, depending on what state of mind that I'm in, it's definitely a different story. You know, like right now I'm in a good space, uh, uh -huh. emotionally, thank, thank God. Yeah, that's um, good. But, eh, and I'm definitely not sober. Uh, like I still drink alcohol and smoke. Sure. And, um, but, ooh, but w which is, I, it, it makes me very tempted to see how magical it would be if I did quit all of those things. But yeah. we're in quarantine right now, so I don't honestly want to. <laughs> you don't want to experience um, the full I reality of quarantine? <laughs> no. Because we can get into other stuff, but i'm clearly losing my mind to everybody right now on social media right but, um, yeah did I and that about the, did i did i answer my questions about the crystals though i, don't I know think if I, may, if I, I, your I think so i mean what is the the is there a religious aspect to the crystals or is it more just you know certain crystals bring certain energies or uh, make you more attuned to certain energies because i don't get necessarily so, a religious aspect from people who you know quote unquote believe in crystals i think there's a lot of benefit to people like you know how they talk about the people who grew up in the church their whole lives and never felt a connection to god mm -hmm. i th i think it helps uh with some people uh that might have that kind of experience like for example i remember very specifically um, and they, I, I know you said people have said it's a scientific like deal. Um, I remember one time I, I was like moon gazing and I like I brought my crystals out and I let the moon and charge them and, and I actually did and, and I wasn't drinking any caffeine or anything like that but I did have trouble sleeping that night and I found that interesting because of mm. the energy that may have came from the rocks or um, yeah one time there's this stone aqu aquamarine which is apparently good for your throat chakra and I was wearing mine and and I remember I I was able to like it was a conflict at work and I was able to stand up for myself that day which in a normal situation I probably would have been quiet and I was like it must hmm. have been my crystal, you know. So I mean, like, do, interesting, yeah. Do I think? Do I believe? I believed it at that time. You better believe I thought that that it had something to do with it. Um, hmm. But did I believe it so much where I was like, I made it where like, okay, now every single day I need my aquamarine and I need to charge it in the full moon, and you know, yeah. no, you know, because I, I I still went about my life, and right now I. I the only crystal I'm wearing is like right now is diamond that my mom gave me and I, I'm not like it's not a part of my There's I don't no know mystical... when the next full moon is is all I'm telling you. yeah no mystical but there powers. are a lot of crystals in his house right now yeah oh yeah, okay I, I and I think it but I think it has to do with me also and uh it's my choice right now like right right now like I don't I don't wake up every morning I used to wake up every morning and meditate Mm. vegetable cards and I'm like okay I'm going to dedicate to these days of this meditation I'm going to be quiet I'm going to play the music and you know but you know it's phases you know it's like in and out like it's yeah. we, we don't have to be the same person like just like comedy you know I didn't have to be a comedian and just because I quit comedy didn't mean I I couldn't go back to being a comedian right just because I used to read tarot cards professionally doesn't mean I can't you know, I've actually been thinking about revisiting it just because we're on lockdown and I know there's yeah. a lot of people who would love to even make just simple donations to me within their cards, you know, right, and that's right. I'm considering revisiting. Yeah. And, and I think anybody who thinks that you have to be the same person for, oh, you're not that person anymore. So don't, no, 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 no. You can always go yeah. back. Yeah. You can always revisit and you can always explore new grounds and, and anyone who says you can't is baloney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair enough. Uh, so, so do you believe in an afterlife? 
I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know anymore. Gotcha. I don't know okay. anymore. I, 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 I don't, I definitely don't believe in hell. Okay. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I don't believe that there's this fiery bowl that bad people go burn in and like have cockroaches crawl all over their faces. And I, I don't believe in that. Because yeah. the, the God that I believe in wouldn't do that to anybody. Got it. Yeah, fair enough. Do I believe there are people that are that sick alive in this world that probably should go to yeah. that place? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But again, I don't, I also believe in psychology and I don't know how they got to that dark space. You know, I don't know, they, a lot right. of people were born into that kind of a lifestyle. So who am I to say? Right, right. Oh, hey, one thing I want you to think about while we're talking. At the very end, we're doing a segment called What's the Deal with Mormons? Where you have a chance to ask me a few questions about Mormonism or what I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I forgot to okay. tell you that before we started this whole thing. Um, Thank God, because I, I was about to question you, but I was like, I'll just let him talk. No, if you have a question now, <laughs> feel free. That. Feel free. We can go into it. Well, I was just going to say, do you, what is your definition of afterlife? So Mormonism is pretty, um, I, I think, fairly clear about what awaits at least some of us in the afterlife. Now, as far as specifics, like what we're going to do or what the afterlife will be like, it's still fairly vague, like most religions are. Um, but according to Mormon doctrine, uh, this traditional idea of hell, what you talked about, right, the cockroaches and the, and the burning flames, uh, is reserved in Mormonism for very, very few people. The people who end up going to hell are... Uh, those who have a perfect Pedophiles. knowledge, not necessarily those who have a perfect, the, the qualification for hell is the, those who have a perfect knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is, they know for sure that he exists, that he is who he claims to be. They then deny that they know it and they uh, convince others to uh, not follow Jesus Christ. So people who are actively fighting against the gospel of Jesus Christ, turning people away from, from him as their savior. Those people are okay. the ones that go to what we call outer darkness uh, or hell. Okay. Heaven is incredibly okay, large. Not know that. Yeah. Basically everybody on the earth goes to heaven. Um, okay. Even the pedophiles unless, right. They had a perfect knowledge and, push people away from Christ. So yeah. Yeah. Now there are different in Mormonism, there are different levels or different degrees well, no, and, of heaven. And that, um, I was going to say that's fair because I was watching that uh, Netflix special about the, uh, that kid who was abused, uh, the trials of, there was a little Mexican boy. I forget. I, I was trying to talk about it in my podcast actually that I was recording. Um, hmm. But basically, I was trying to I was trying to sympathize for the, his abuser, and I was thinking like, well, there's a huge what, from what I saw, there's a huge chance that he was abused because maybe yeah. he was gay. Because like I, I think in the end they they abused him because he was gay, and I'm mm. thinking, well, there's a huge chance that that man was abused when he was young because he sure. might have been gay, and then he got scared straight, you know. So if he got scared straight, then there's a chance that he right. just was doing what he was, what he, he, he it was a, a learned, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe, so, maybe so. I mean, that, that, yeah. that was it. that's a typical cycle, right? Yeah. The awful abuse cycle. Um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So in Mormonism to finish answering the question, there are levels of heaven and we really know, we claim we know most about the highest level of heaven. So in Mormonism to attain the highest level, which we call exaltation, it's uh, really reserved for ma man and women who are married, right? A man and a woman who are married in Mormon temples, sealed together, which is a ceremony that's performed in our temples. And they essentially are gods and goddesses, right? So they are our Heavenly Father, Father and Heavenly like Mother. That. They continue that on, right? They have okay. spirit children. They make their own planets. They send their spirit babies down to get physical bodies like we're here now. And uh, the thing continues. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, and, and that was another thing that I, I kept stepping away from the churches because there were so many things I would find in the Catholic church that I just didn't like, like the whole gays are going to hell. 
simply because right. I brought that up. And I just, right. I didn't like that, you know, because I, I believe that they were born that way. So like there was yeah. just like one step at a time, I kept stepping away and I was like, I don't like what this says, you know, yeah. and I don't, and there, there were, and, and, and what I, when I hear you speak, I, I hear you talk about it like it's law. And I like yeah. that because I, I wish I did have a faith where I was like, no, in the Catholic Bible, it says. <laughs> yeah, this is the way this. it is. <laughs> This, this is the way, and, and for me, I was like, no, I'm not going around in this society yeah. that we live in saying gays are going to burn in hell. Right. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, you know, so yeah, I slowly well, but surely kept stepping away. Yeah, so. and, and fair enough. I think, you know, Mormonism has had its bouts with, uh, you know, social issues as well. And the thing I'll say about that in general <laughs> is... You know, every church, at least the way I look at it, the Mormon church might be, in my view, one of the best churches on the earth. But is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But the gospel that right. I feel like I've learned from this church is perfect. I do think the gospel is perfect, right? And it does cover everybody and it does okay. ensure for uh, happiness for everyone. That's just the way I, I look at it. But I look at those two things very differently, right? So like the gospel that is taught by the Catholic faith, I don't know exactly what that is, but I would hope it's more perfect than the Catholic church, you know? And I've had friends who have left the Mormon yeah. church over things that the church has done. And my comments to them are typically, you know, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater, right? It's, there, there are bad things or mistakes that the church has made but that doesn't make the gospel that we're all trying to live bad or untrue or unreal. And your, your preachers are called preachers. What are they called? Uh, like yeah. Called so, what are yours called? right. So we have uh, a lay ministry. So no one is paid to lead a congregation in my faith. They like my, what we call the leader of our congregation is a bishop. So my bishop is actually a, a real estate agent near mm -hmm. where we live, right? So that's how he earns his living. And then on Sundays nice. and occasional evenings throughout the week, he has sort of church duties that he has to attend to. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And he can, of course, be married and, and have kids. Wait, what'd you say? He's oh, allowed, yeah. He, yes, he's allowed yes. to be married and have yeah. kids and all that. Yeah. Okay. We do not believe in a celibate okay. priesthood. No, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And what about women? Can women be bishops? Right. No, they cannot. They cannot. There has okay. been some okay. discussion within the faith regarding women holding priesthood. There's a whole movement. I forget the woman who uh, is sort of the face of this movement. I forget her name. But there's a, there is a movement currently where women are some women are wanting to hold the priesthood officially and are petitioning church leaders to do so, to allow them to have it. And my wife and I have talked about this a lot. I mean, the official church stance, as far as I know, is that women do not hold the priesthood in the way that men do. Uh, but, you know, my wife and I have talked about this a lot. And our understanding is priesthood is the power of God. Okay, so that's what priesthood means. But clearly God creates right? And women have an innate ability, purposefully so, I think, spiritually and physically, to create babies, right? To create life. Um, right. How is that not, you know, my wife brought this up, how is that not a power of God? How does that not fall into uh, a priesthood? So maybe the way that we understand it is flawed somehow, right? That we limit it just semantically, the priesthood is for men, but really the power of God is overarching, right? Where it includes both men and women um, to create, right? I mean, clearly, according to my theology, men and women are necessary for exaltation to become like God. So clearly they both must work within God's power. Um, Do you have the, like, like the nuns, like, uh, like our version of what nuns are? Uh, we do. What, what do you call them? So here's the way it works for us. There's no, um, right, there's no paid clergy or anything like that. Um, 
and no celibacy that's required in the church. Uh, once, you know, everyone's encouraged to get really? married. Yeah. And everyone's encouraged to get married okay, to okay. someone of the opposite sex, right? Okay, we, right? We preach and try to practice abstinence before marriage. And then, uh, you know, being true to your spouse, what is the technical term? Anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, you, you only have sex with your spouse. That's it. Uh, that's the only time. Do- yeah. The only okay. person, okay. but so for nuns and priests, uh, that idea we take on for two years, uh, during missions. So you serve a mission as a young man or young woman, um, in, in your teens. Now I think it's 18 and 19. So like 18 year old for men, 19 year old for women, uh, women serve for a year and a half and is it's optional for women for men it's optional but very strongly encouraged i mean there's a huge culture push for all men to serve uh and you serve for two years so from now yeah. it's from 18 to 20 yeah and you go to okay. you know proselyte typically it's a proselyting mission so you're sent somewhere either in the u.s or across you know the world to teach others about the gospel of jesus christ Some serve only in uh, non-proselyting ways, which is, you know, they go and they they perform in like little Mormon shows or at church history sites, at our our faith's church history sites in in New York and, you know, Nauvoo, Illinois and things like that. Uh, But yeah, so those those are the kind of things. But that, so we take on that sort of priest and nun kind of thing where you're really just devoted to the gospel and to God and to Jesus for a a pretty limited time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is limited. Two years is nothing. Yeah. Not too long. It feels, it can feel like a long time. That's not a bad trade. No, no, not bad at all. Not bad at all. But yeah, I think celibacy does weird things to people. You know, I I think it messes them (laughs) up a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just a little. Yeah. So how has your view of God changed? <laughs> like what, when you were brought up, what is the Catholic, like, did you believe in the Trinity? I, I figure you're taught the Trinity. Did you ever really believe the Trinity? Yeah. Uh, with a very, like I had a hard time understanding it, but yeah. I believed in it. Yeah. Um, but, but I also like, you know, like, we have saints in the Virgin Mary and the Catholic church yeah there's a lot of sort of mysticism in the catholic church i think yes so i mean to me again catechism yeah one one hour a week wasn't enough for a, a, a young developing mind you know such as all catholic children are to even begin to comprehend so it was almost just like a a chore like a chore to toward us to just yeah. go, okay there's this thing that we do there's there's god and we we want to go to heaven so you know it's an hour an hour a week and let's do it so it wasn't enough time to really yeah. like, you know believe you know, right like, oh, oh okay we believe but not understand <laughs> yeah like, to understand, say right. an hour of sunday school a week was enough to understand you know what god was is it not that's not a yeah. Trade, you know. Were so, you encouraged to read yeah, but, the Bible and study things on your own? No. Gotcha. Never. Oh, interesting. So, have you ever read the Bible and, and, all the and way even through? Even as a little girl, no. Okay. Never. Sorry. You I were even just gonna tried say... when I was younger. I, I, it was it was it was too hard. I, I, yeah. I, I, I couldn't even begin to comprehend what it was saying. I was yeah. like, I no, I, I remember reading it, and I was like, "What?" I, I got through a few pages in, and I was like, "There's no, I just said, this is doing nothing for me." Yeah, you know? interesting. Like, there were some books in the the same language that I speak that I could hard, have a hard, I had a hard time understanding. Where yeah. I was like, "There's no way." So, yeah. I, I used to think about that even like I used to be mad at my parents, but like, why didn't you ever get me a math tutor? You know, uh, because math is another language, you yeah. know, and for you ex- to expect me to go to like one subject, you know, one, one hour a day for this math class without having any outside help, like, how did you expect me to get good at this? Yeah. You know, this is literally another language. So it's the same thing with the religion. Like, do you want me to translate this text? It's yeah. literally written like a, like, 
however long ago and, and, and understand it, it is for life. Yeah. So, Have you revisited the scriptures, uh, you know, the Bible since, like, like now, currently, have you revisited them? Only the Essene Gospel of Peace. Gotcha. Okay. That I told you about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Because I, I connect to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. So. I, and, and because, to, well, to be completely honest with you, even if I were to revisit it now, I would have a hard time understanding it. So sure. I would have to get one of those like Bible for Dummies books and like maybe <laughs> listen to it on, you know, audio. Yeah. I, I wouldn't understand it. There's no yeah. way. It's yeah. complicated. And, and my brain goes like in a million different directions. I, I, I wouldn't even know what I was listening to. Yeah. Well, and would you read the Bible as a historical text or as a... Uh, you know, a symbolic text or as both or as neither, I guess. I don't know. As fantasy, as fantasy fiction. It's the same way about conspiracy theories. And I tell people like, I'll watch a conspiracy theory documentary and I don't believe it 100%, but I pick and choose what I believe. It's the same thing. Like I don't, kind of the way I used to do with the Catholicism. Like I believe this part, this part, this part, that should not lie. But you know, if you do this, you're going to burn in the fires of hell. I don't believe that. Same right. Thing. Like, right. I, I would pick and choose. Got yeah. it. Got it. All right. Let's talk about this the. Is, it, it, and, that, and that was the, that was the energy thing too. Like to me, it's like, if in your heart, you're like, if you, if you even in the slightest believe that you're a good person mm-hmm. and you read something and you're like, that's wrong. I feel like, well, there's a huge chance that it's probably wrong. Right. You know? Sure. Sure. Like, or at the very and least. I, and, and I can't say that for most people. It. Yeah. Right. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say you you've uh, you've hinted at and brought up conspiracy theories, and I watched I watched one documentary you sent, and then the first part I guess there were like ten episodes of this one uh, mm-hmm. regarding. It sounds like it's it's getting into the coronavirus, really. Um, mm-hmm. So I watched the first episode of that, and and then the one on uh, you know the occult. So I want to talk to you about those. Hollywood, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So which okay. parts, let's, which one do you want to look at first? Well, let me ask you this. Did, did you hear and understand that the coronavirus has a patent? Yes. Yes, I did. I did hear and understand that. And Ebola. Do you believe She, she that? claimed Ebola had a patent and uh, what else? HIV. HIV, right? Had a like patent. AIDS, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do I you mean, believe that? Like, that's the first question. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't had if you If you don't believe that, then it's hard to believe the conspiracy. Yes. And I think, here, well, here's, here's what I'll say about it. I haven't looked it up. I don't think there's a, a matter of believing or not believing if something has a patent. That's publicly available, right? We should be able to find that. Um, so I, I just haven't had time between watching it and now to look it up. But I will. I want to. Uh, and if there is one, I think that there are perhaps some ways to explain why they would have a patent as opposed to just them being man-made and being patented to make money off of, because that's well, typically the way we think. Isn't the it. definition, isn't the definition of patent an intellectual piece of property? Like in order for something to have a patent, because the reason why you patent something is because you don't want anybody to mimic it or steal it or recreate or. You know, so typically it means that somebody created it. Yes. You know, I don't understand how that could, like, it should be 1,000% illegal. Yeah. If that is true. Because yeah. it basically means, oh, hey, you patented this virus and then you exposed it to the world. So shouldn't you be executed on site? Sure. You know, sure. if that is true. Yeah. You know? So that, yeah. and that's the part where, again, I don't quite understand. Yeah, the only explanation that I can think of, um, because I agree with you, if people are creating, you know, Ebola or COVID-19 and releasing it out purposely trying to get people sick, that's terrible, right? But I do know that for clinical trials, uh, I think they need to, I'm not sure, not sure, but I could envision a process in which they would need to create the thing that they are trying to uh, you know, mediate, destroy, 
uh, counteract, but that that's not the actual virus that got out, right? They're just proving that they can make it so that they can then counteract it. It's, it's sort of like it's patented along okay. with, right, uh, a cure. Um, well, and then, but, but then if that's the case, you know, like, I, I, need, I, need another, I need another example of that, right? right? Like, there needs to be another example where it's like, oh, this thing came out of thin air. Right. Oh, I called it first. Like, I want to patent it. <laughs> yeah, so, sure, uh, sure. Because I see a business idea of, like, getting – I want to vac- create the vaccine because I have yeah. money to – fun did did you watch that bill gates netflix special that came out about like all of the philanthropy that he did no i did not watch it yet i wanted i want to but i've not seen it yet it's it's very it makes him look great that's all i'm gonna say well yeah it makes bill gates look like it makes him look like a god. It's yeah, like, wow, of, Bill, of course it would. You right? are so amazing. It, it like it shows him struggling. Well, oh, these schools didn't want to help me find a way to create the plumbing for these. Like Bill and Melinda were like, "What? People are dying from diarrhea." <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe this. We've got to do something. But then it's also right. on record of Bill saying. Hey, we gotta start, you know, uh, mandating this population control crap, or else they're gonna all these worthless people are gonna use our resources. So let's get rid of <laughs> sure. them. Sure. And that's on, yeah. on record, basically saying that, for lack of better words, you know. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. And my and my question is, it's like Bill's worth, and this is only what it says on the internet, right? billion dollars right and every time i look up what people are worth it actually lowballs them a little bit so who knows what he's yeah because really it's worth. it's so, very difficult right so and, and i don't look at him as a philanthropist i don't care what that netflix series said about him like today yeah. bill is like if any i try to write like bits about that it's like i i for me he went to these countries and was like these people are disgusting and like we don't need them here <laughs> You know, like let's get rid of them. Like to yeah. what's going on in Bill's yeah. brain. Like he's he's not like let's save these people. He's like throw them in the fires. Like, right. This is, right. This well, is and great. there's always an argument you know? for philanthropists <laughs> being like, you know, goodwill is is good for business. You know, so doing good things over here means we right. make more money here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And exactly, which is. And can you think about what this vaccine, like business move, would be if he could right. mandate, like, where every single person, in order to get back to be a part, being a part of the functioning society, is obligated to get it, like, yeah, like, even oh, if no. you got fifty cents or a yeah, penny yeah, yeah. for yeah, every person, for, right? That, right. No, seven. You know, yeah, yeah, seven million dollars so, or whatever so, it is, right? Yeah. And then, and then that's the thing is that like, and now, but I just want to let you know, if you even dig a little bit, every there's a lot of people on my side because there's like a hashtag going around that's like kill Bill, like, <laughs> like everyone is, and they're, they're like my, they're like my body, my body, my rights, you know, right? People are pissed, right? Because it's like you know, it's just it's just like the flu, like like the, the flu vaccine. I, I don't ever get the flu shot. You know, yeah. that's what I haven't got the flu since the last time I got the flu shot. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, like, sure. And, and I know the flu's going around, and I'm not, I'm not walking around scared. Right. And I'm getting right. the flu because people are coughing. You know, because guess what? I know what vitamin C is. I know what yeah. you know, staying warm is, and taking a shower, <laughs> and getting enough sleep, and a healthy diet does for me. Yeah, you know? but you and know, I'm talking about that. Well, the typical argument against anti-vaxxers. I'm not saying you're an anti-vaxxer, but you know, the typical argument for people who don't get any sort of vaccination is you're not, it's not about you being at risk. It's about you putting others at risk, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, but with Isn't the flu vaccine. Though, that if I, yeah, go ahead. But what, is, is there any science behind, like, if my mother was vaccinated and she gives birth to me, like, I, I need to get those same, like, it, it doesn't hurt, I don't know, kind of like acquiring... Like yeah, but that, that so lasts why, why for do we like. Have to keep... Yeah, I mean the flu strain mutates, right? And every yeah. year they do the flu vaccine, they hand pick, I don't know, four, four strains, four or five strains of the flu that they essentially give you, uh, so that your body can build the antibodies. Mm. And so there's still no guarantee yeah, yeah. that you're not going to get the flu if you get the flu 
vaccine because they're picking four of who knows how many strands there are out there, right? And it mutates every year, which is why you get I it never, every year. I never year. knew that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they claim. So that's the worry about wow. COVID-19 is, is it mutating? Can people get sick from essentially, you know, a, a technically different virus, but it's the same illness. Can you get sick from it multiple times? Right. Uh, and is it going to be an annual cyclical I mean, and, and, and thing? And in Bill's defense, I think it's a highly intelligent virus. I think that's genius. <laughs> like, let's take out the immunocompromised. Like, I mean, great. yeah, let's here's build a stronger yeah people. The only argument I see, but yeah, you're going to build a stronger people if you don't if you don't force us all to get vaccinated. Right. Let Darwinism run its course. Right. Because just all the, just. Yeah, there's going to be people who are going to stand in line to get the vaccination, but those of yeah, us who of don't want to get it, leave us alone. <laughs> right, right. And we'll that's see all, who survives. That's all I care about. We'll see who survives. You can vaccinate whoever you want. And yeah. You guys, and, and exactly, let us do it at our own risk. If we all want to die because we don't want to get your crazy vac- vaccination, then let us do it. Like, let us, let yeah. us you know, let off it ourselves. Go. Let it go. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I mean... And, as as a PC user, as a Windows user, if Bill made this virus, I have very little confidence in it lasting very long. Because Windows breaks down all the yeah. time. You know? Yeah. So it, unless he unless he really yeah, upped his game. That's the argument. You know, with Windows eleven, COVID nineteen. <laughs> well, did you look up the ID twenty twenty that I posted about? No, I did not look that up either. I, I was watching your other documentary, the hour long, the out of the shadows. Well, it's a, it's, it's a web it's a website. You can get on it. And, right. Uh, his 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 argument is that you know there's people in certain parts of the world that um, are born in obviously third world countries or they yeah. it's poverty and they don't have access to hospitals and and offices that are giving them their birth certificates or whatever so there's a lot of people who don't have an identity yeah so what do you do you shoot it up in their wrist (laughs) and you give them basically an id that's in that that they hold with them that they almost like you microchip them like you Uh a dog Uh so now they're microchipped and that's what he's saying he wants to microchip every single person Right. So, but then, but then that goes so deep. Again, that's a whole other rabbit hole. That <laughs> that's a whole about. other. What's going to be on our? Right. Well, what's going to be on our? You know, uh, and I'm trying to write material about this about what's going to. Is it going to be our bank accounts now? Are they going to take away our cash? You know, like our whole yeah, identity, yeah, yeah. our social security, everything is going to be on this microchip that you're going to have access to. Yeah, and then no. you just scan it. You okay. know, when you want to buy something, when you walk into a store, you're going on the airplane. They just know. They know. And everything. what do you do when you have Microsoft? What do you get, Seth? Blue screen. Viruses. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, Crystal. If you've done nothing wrong, you have nothing to worry about. Right? Well, that's another thing I was writing about. Well, guess what? Sometimes if I get a speeding ticket, you're talking to a paycheck to paycheck patron of the United States of America, and I'm sorry to say it, but guess what? Yeah. If I get a speeding ticket, and you know, and, and I, I want to take the fines, and I want to get the late fees, because I want to go shopping instead, that's my right as an American. And I'm like, eh, <laughs> that is. I'll pay it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, maybe I do want to do something wrong. Maybe I do want to get the late fees because what if I <laughs> like what if I was single and I had a hot day and I needed to go shopping? Like then no. Sure. Like sure. that's my right as a human being. If I want to break the law and pay my speeding ticket late, well then what the hell? So you're gonna automatically withdraw that from my from my microchip? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. No. Yeah. That or prison. <laughs> that or prison. It's bo- uh, <laughs> boring. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. All right, let's talk about out of the shadows. I don't know the COVID nineteen thing. I'm I am reluctant to get behind it being man made. Maybe I think it's more likely. It's related. It is related, but I think this is the last thing I'll say about it. I'll let you have the last word on it, and then we'll move to the out of the shadows. So my last thought on COVID nineteen: if it's man made, it was man made by China to control their older and and sick population. That seems more likely to me than Which- Bill. Which bill has a huge percentage invested into that company? 
I mean, f sure. It's a world. But it's, it's, a, it's a global. It's global. It's, it's global. global. It's global. But I'm saying that no, no, I'm saying the Chinese government did it. I'm not saying Bill did it. I'm more, I'm more willing to believe the Chinese government initiated it and it got out of hand. That's, that's what I'm more willing to believe. And just to go ahead and tell you again, don't forget that uh, China, the Chinese also, I think they funded uh, the Harvard Medical School, like $400 million they invested into our economy. Like the, the Chinese basically, like, all, they basically own America. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for I think sure. They own like half of our national parks now. Or everything. So like, to me, it makes sense. It's you crazy. That. I yeah, it comes yeah no, it's yeah. crazy for sure, for sure. And they own the WHO. Anyway, we could go down. A whole rabbit hole with this. Uh, so let's talk about out of the shadows because yeah, it is related shadows. to COVID nineteen, but a little bit different. My favorite part. What was your favorite part? That it's related to COVID nineteen. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you okay. Know my conspiracy on that. No, I don't. What is your conspiracy on it? My conspiracy is that. Uh, did you, you do you know about the the documentary, The Rape of Two Quarries? No. Did you hear about that? Uh-uh. you know who Corey Feldman is? Yeah. So there's two quarries, Corey Feldman, and I don't know the other quarry, but Co the other quarry died of an overdose a few years back. And uh -huh. uh, allegedly, he asked Corey Feldman, um, hey, no matter what, make sure, because they both apparently got raped by, uh. there, apparently there were, these par there were these parties that these young kids, you know, went to when they were young child stars, where all of the big, big wigs, you yeah. know, that's where they did their they're naughty stuff. Yeah. So, and then before the one Corey overdose, he asked Corey Feldman, hey, like, don't, don't let these people get away with this. Mm. And that's, this is why Mel Gibson apparently got blacklisted because he is on record talking about the pedophile ring going oh. on. Uh, Brad Pitt had Corey Feldman's back. Um, Elijah Wood uh -huh. uh, had his back. And he said the only reason why he didn't uh, ever get involved is because his mom wouldn't let him go to these parties. Yeah, so there's wow. a bunch of people having um, Corey Feldman's back. No one would, no one had Corey's back to help produce the film, but he did eventually get the funding, and he had a website that you could pay like twenty dollars to see the screening that he was going to exploit all of these people. And um, the night of the premiere, it got hacked. Oh, so. Yeah, so all the people that paid the money, they could never get the documentary up and running. I believe, yeah. and again, you have to understand that the people that he's exploiting, although they're big names in Hollywood, like, you know, you, we don't know the producers, but I, I mean, at least I don't. I'm not sitting at my computer going, who's producing all of these films? Right, right, you know? right. I want to know who the comedians are and who's producing you know, comedy shows, but I, I don't care about who's producing, like, big the blockbusters film. or whatever. Yeah. So, right. So apparently he did like leak some names or whatever. And that's what his point was. He's like, I want to see indictments. I want to see this fall. Like I want the collapse of this. And which is why Out of the Shadows was so fascinating because it was again, the stunt man who was also following the crumbs. And then the, even that lady who, uh, who was a very, she had a, an amazing reputation. She was a journalist. I don't remember her name, but uh, right. it wasn't until she started um, do, uh, reviewing her, looking at Pizzagate yeah you know that's when that's when she started they, they started calling her crazy and all this so basically and and the whole point of the documentary is if you believe that these people truly are funding the media that it makes sense that they wouldn't be allowed to talk about this right sure because they're saying, hey, we own you, so you can't talk about us. Yeah. Like, how dare you? Yeah. You know, like, I, I'm your boss. Yeah. What I do is none of your business. So how yeah. dare, you know, like, I, I, I own the world. I run, I run everything. You can't talk right. about us. Which right. Which is really interesting because of the whole, even with the whole Epstein thing and Weinstein yeah. and all that. And, and, and so the conspiracy is now, I called it the last Jenga piece. Uh -huh. Now that it's all falling, they almost had to shut the world down because apparently uh -huh. there's indictments going on and there's people that are like, it could, because how do you throw 
the person who owns the jail in jail. You know what I mean? Right. Like, these people are like the elite. Like apparently the the, the the shadow government or the the I don't even know what I don't know. Again, I I pick and choose. I don't know what you want to call them or the the cabal yeah. is what they're calling them. Yeah. If they literally own the world. Uh-huh. Again, how do you throw somebody who's worth hundred billion dollars in jail? Like just for, for an example, like if it was Bill. Like what if Bill was a pedophile? Like he's right. worth a hundred billion dollars. Not only it's like he could buy a, a country and say, okay, well I'm gonna just buy this country and just go hang out in this country and f- you. you know what yeah. I mean? Like how do you even go about doing that when there's that many of them that are involved? And that's yeah. my conspiracy is that they're so mind blown and confused right now about what's going on mm-hmm. that some sh- is about to go down. That this coronavirus thing is even, it's almost like a joke about what's really going on. Yeah. And that's what I'm really interested to see. And that's why I'm getting guns and bullets. I'm like, I'm worried because like, I, I think, and, and I think so many people are going to be disappointed that like, they, that they're not even going to know how to comprehend what's going on. So I, you just have to prepare for the worst. Mm. And that's it. Interesting. And that's yeah. why I find it interesting. Yeah. So you think I truly once... believe that these people are finally going to get in trouble. Yeah. Gotcha. So once quarantine's lifted, once everybody, you know, once they can't keep us inside anymore, because people are like, no, we're going to work. I don't care if we get sick. I don't care no, if I die. I think it's going to happen during quarantine. Ah, okay. Got it. And then what people, no, just... I think that's why we're quarantined. Right. No, I know. I know. I we're going to, we're going to wake yeah. We're going to wake up one day and we're going to get on our little news apps. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to see that people, you know, whoever. That's, that's what I think is going to happen. So, so we're going to get on our news apps and what? Everyone will see yeah. who's been the indicted. Guy, yeah. Or someone's going to be found for starting. Yeah. And it's, or it's going to be a formal apology. Of what's uh-huh. really been going on this whole entire time, or maybe it's going to be the exposure of PizzaGate, and it's uh-huh. like, you know what, uh, we've lied to you. Um, PizzaGate's a real thing. Uh, Lolita Island, or whatever Epstein's Island was called, or whatever the name is, yeah. you know. And they're going to say, you know, these are the people that were involved. We're doing what we can. Uh, it's complicated, and that's it. And I Interesting. And in, in, in yeah, and I think that's why it's so. I mean, they have a hard time doing like like I. I this is why I get I've been getting so mad about like uh, the news lately. Like the, the the stupidity of the headlines. Like the other day, the the news title that made the headline that made me mad was, "If we would have figured this out sooner, we could have yeah. saved some lives." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that pissed me off because I'm like, there are people starving right now. Yes. And that that is what's serious like okay i get all of you elites are trying to figure out your bull but there are people who are, are just yeah hungry people are yeah. hungry yeah and they are, are are scared and they don't know how they're paying their rent and they don't know how they're going to get work and they don't know how they're feeding their children and you're going to put that kind of a headline out right we could right. save lives if we would have figured this out sooner like no tell us where the food is like put out food bank mm-hmm. information yeah. how to get uh, health insurance people don't have their medications people right. need to pay their rent like h- help these people while right. you guys are figuring out your bull like that's my that's my beef right it's like it's a, like listen okay i get i get you on the media but like help us yeah like that's the problem yeah and, that, and that's what i just don't like is that it's, it's not funny i get it <laughs> you guys are doing whatever you're doing but like god help the people yeah, yeah, yeah. Try yeah. To kill us all off, but just help this. <laughs> <laughs> but there are I worse problems. Like, yeah, I mean, even even considering that yeah. you know coronavirus is a, a legitimate illness that it's naturally you know occurring, uh, there are things that uh, have killed more people than than coronavirus, and I've the been fact that, for that on the internet. The yeah, right. Right. No, I know. I know. And I think we have some mutual friends that have uh, (laughs) taken upon themselves to champion, you know, the seriousness. And it is good that we're socially distancing. I think it's it'll be good for health just in general going forward. But it is unfortunate that we can't. And the world. Yeah. And the the world. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All of the cars being off the roads, you know, it's all good. And I think hopefully we can band together after this to conquer maybe the NRA, right? And get, get some good gun legislation in place. Uh, yeah. Keep people like you from keep from owning guns. Uh, no, I don't know. But, Please. you know, the, the, the obituates or the barbiturate increase in the United States is also terrible, right? The opiate, that's the word I'm looking for. The opiate, uh, oh you know, overdosing and overprescribing, you know, all those things could also be dealt with if we, if we band together in a similar way. So hopefully this will be good for just general things going forward. But, but I, I agree with you. There is aspects of it that I find difficult to get worked up about as much as I see other people. I mean, that, that's a whole other emotion that I have, like, with that. Because I, yeah. like, that, I think that's the first thing that I mentioned in this, when we started recording, is my yeah. abuse of Big Pharma, yeah. you know? Because just... I was just trying to bring it full circle. Say, full circle. You, you, and you did a great job, because that, that's my issue. Yeah. Um, is that, like, you know, people can go and have a 45-minute appointment with, a physician's assistant, not even a doctor, no offense to PAs, right. but, and be like, oh, I just met you, and 45 minutes later, you're clinically depressed, here's some medication. Yeah. And then now they're addicted to antidepressants. You know, right. it's, the same, it's the same side of somebody, an addicted substance, after talking to them for 30 minutes. Yeah. Because you know the first 15 minutes is like an introduction. Hey, how are you? Okay, right, I'm right. What's your brief so-and-so. medical history? And then after 30 minutes, yeah. you know, here's some serious psychomyocarditis. Like, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you get, like you said, full circle. It's all, they're all criminals. Talking. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they all <laughs> go away. Hopefully they all go away. I mean, I, I, I hope this can be used to really improve the healthcare system. And the in-network, out-of-network nonsense that occurs with doctors and hospitals. I mean, I hope it all gets better. So I know, I know you said that the ending is me asking you questions, but can and, and I don't know if it has to be at a certain topic. But do yeah. you believe that there's a pedophile ring in Hollywood? Ooh, I man. Yeah, usually we limit this to just beliefs, you know, religiously, but this is fine. Uh, is there, I don't know. I mean, how does someone like, you know, take Kevin Spacey, um, how, how does he, how does someone like that operate? Are they all just independent actors? I don't know, you know, no pun intended on the actor thing. Um Man, I think that, I don't know, I guess my experience is that if you get on an in crowd anywhere, it's possible. I guess I'll put it that way. It's possible that there is a pedophilia ring in Hollywood. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I would be willing to believe that it could be out there. I've never been included. You know, they've never called me, even when I had my mustache. So I don't know what's going on. But <laughs> do you believe okay. you? I take it you believe sincerely that there is an organized ring. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I, but I, I need to do more research on because it's again, I, I've gotten on the creepy level aspect of it, where they're also sure. Like, they're like Satanists and there's yeah, weird crap going on and yeah. they have these rituals and la 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 and like and so that that's how deep I'm going where yeah. and, and I, I don't I don't like it. I, I hate I hate that it's so like who I wanna know who started this objective and how far back is it go? Like what year was it like, you know, the seven eighteen hundreds? Where I mean, there was this one person who like yeah <laughs> because that's how much i believe that it's true sure that sure well i mean if you really get into it right it's like freemasons uh and, and disney disney catholicism you know it all it all goes together right yeah interesting yeah. 
Yeah. No, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's out there. Maybe the Illuminati are out there controlling everything. Slowly <laughs> moving. I don't know. It's tough. Tough to. I pray. Yeah. I pray to the Lord that it's all exposed before the quarantine ends. That's all I'm <laughs> yeah. Say. Let's come out to a new world, right? Let's come out to a new world, clean, fresh start. Well, we already are going to. We are in, in, we are. in a lot of aspects. Even if not. If there's not even one indictment, it's going to be a new world because it already is cleaner because of the environment. Yeah. yeah. And there's yeah. Going and they to got Harvey Weinstein. Businesses that are closed. Yeah. They got Jeffrey yeah. Epstein. But why didn't they? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Should have killed him though. He should have killed Harvey. Why didn't it kill him? I don't know. I guess he didn't have he info on of- other people. He was his own actor. You know, he sort of did himself in so he must have crossed somebody no, else i was gonna say why did why didn't the coronavirus <laughs> oh yeah i don't know he wasn't unhealthy <laughs> yeah. enough i yeah. guess yeah i don't understand that either Jeez. I mean, it's always the bad ones that survive suck, too many they suck too many souls of young women He's just yeah so healthy. Jeez, unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable all right. all right you have any other all questions right, for right. me uh <laughs> and then we'll wrap this up okay um Okay, so uh, my only question is, is you said that uh, to go to the greatest part of heaven yeah. was if you find like your partner. Yeah. Well, what about like, um, so what, what if you lose your spouse? Like what if someone passes away? Like yeah, that's obviously, okay, that's acceptable. Like you still, yeah. you still go like. Unless you're it's, the one okay, who's, now what if, unless you're the one who's killed your spouse and then you've probably got an issue. Okay, or but yeah. What about divorce? What about, what about divorce? Like you're divorce. a single mom. Like what if your yeah. like if your husband left you? So like I I'm yeah. I'm in the church and then my husband leaves me. Am I yeah. still accepted into that greater? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still accepted. Like even though the divorce wasn't my choice. So yeah. So here's here's the the quick and dirty of it. Um, because this is a whole huge rabbit hole that we could go down to. Uh, that ties back mm-hmm. into one of your earlier questions about men, women, priesthood. Okay. So officially church's stance is that a man can be sealed to multiple women and sealing is what we talk about. That's what I mean by like eternal marriage. Right. So, um, mm-hmm. so a man can be sealed to multiple women, but a woman can only be sealed to one man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is the official church stance right now. And that might change in the future. Okay. Uh, but in our faith, as far as divorce goes, that is from, you know, the marital contract, you can petition the first presidency. That is the sort of the, the, the governing body of, of our church. Um, because we believe mm-hmm. in, you know, living prophet. And then he has two counselors. We call those three men, the first presidency. So they, they lead the church, right? Um, you can petition mm-hmm. them to have your ceiling annulled. And if they do that, then it's, you mm-hmm. know, blank slate. You can get remarried and resealed to a different person. Okay. Right. We also believe in an That's afterlife. In the Catholic church. Yeah. We also believe in an afterlife in the, sense that like people can still get married and sealed after they've passed on. Um, and we do, perf- we do perform, you know, sealings for those who have passed away in our temples. Hmm. Right. So say we have records okay. of a husband, wife who uh, were not um, sealed. We don't have any record of them being sealed in their lifetime here, uh, you know, in okay. and we perform that for them, right? A man, a husband standing in the place for the dead husband and a wife standing in the place, you know, for the dead wife. And they are then sealed together in proxy for the passed away couple. Oh, that's nice. And we treat that as having now happened for them in the afterlife. So now they are eligible and good to go for, you know, exaltation. But I mean, to the larger question, right? Say you're in a marriage and it is a bad marriage, but you don't want to leave the marriage for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. you know, you still think, and I think, you know, short of like 
let's say it's not physically abusive. Let's just say you're not happy. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I think all of those issues will be sorted out after this life that, you know, if you don't make it a good life for your spouse, then you're, you're also not living up to your covenants that you've made in the temple. So something will be reassorted. And some people just get left, you know, like sometimes it's genuinely not your choice. Yeah. Like somebody doesn't want to stay in it. It's like, what can you do? Like if you go to God and they're like, Hey, I I wanted to stay and they left, like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And they'll, (laughs) yeah, they'll, they'll be sorted out. Right. And for those who, who are like, no, that's not for me. They don't have to be included. But yeah, I don't believe, and it's certainly not, my church's or gospel's stance that our salvation is linked to someone else. Right. Okay, so, good. you, you like know, your, your independent. It's a happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. We're all about the happy okay, ending. You know, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this has been a fun conversation. I'm glad that we sorted through the technical issues so sorry for the jumps to you those know, who are watching and listening. As soon as I held my phone, yeah, I apologize too. Uh, I, I take the blame. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, anything you want to plug? Any other uh, virtual shows you got going on? Um, I, I actually might start um, a different channel where I'm going to do more of like a blog, a uh, vlog style. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Videos rather than podcasting. Um, so look out for that. Cool. Um, and that, that'll probably be more based on YouTube. So, yeah. and I know some people don't like to hear me speak. So maybe you'll like to just watch. Oh wow. Jeez, <laughs> you've heard fun, that. It'll be a lot of like, <laughs> it'll be a lot of gardening and yeah um probably like cooking and fun stuff around the quarantine world and and hopefully yeah. when we open back up it'll still carry on to <laughs> excellent some fun yeah cool and the, well and the yeah. healthy gossip will still go on oh good good so that's still going cool. perfect awesome well thank you so much for joining us crystal yeah. All right. You have a good week. No, thank you. I really had a great time. I appreciate it. You too. Bye. Bye.